ponies at the ready. Yep, that's me. Here I am fighting my last stand in the city of Stalingrad. Now some of you probably have a lot of questions like, what is happening? What cursed mod is this? And did I just hear a woman's voice in Hearts of Iron 4? Well, we gotta go back to the beginning. You see, I was wondering what my next video could be to follow up the Kaiser Redux video, and after a glowing recommendation by ISP, I love Equestria at War smiles. I decided it would be Equestria at War. If you aren't aware, this is a total conversion mod that takes place in the My Little Pony universe. But despite the setting, there will still be plenty of the deaths, atrocities, and political extremism you all should be used to in Hearts of Iron 4 mods. So strap in y'all and get ready for the story of Stalingrad. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. So basically, we are a communist state that broke free from the larger nation of Equestria and the Crystal Empire, but things are going really bad for us right now. The mod does add a few interesting new technologies to research, and even has a whole new tab dedicated to magic related tech. The focus tree seems alright, you can get some decentish campaigns out of this. But we get to see more lore, and we see that the reason we exist was that a brave pony named Steel Stallion started a revolt that led to us getting our independence and starting our mission to bring communism to all of Equestria. We're already on the right track, I mean it wouldn't be a proper leftist regime if there wasn't a bunch of political infighting within the party. One thing everyone can agree on though is that this nation needs a really nice looking building to run the country from. First thing we took care of was the political infighting in our nation, and for me, I saw that Vasily had a better plan for the future over his opponent, so we made him lead the nation. But Vasily didn't have everything secured yet, with a pony named Sinister Servov planning on running against him in the upcoming elections. And after some heated debates, the ponies chose Servov because his branch in the focus tree seemed a lot more fun. After hearing about the aggressive expansion of the changelings in the far west, it was clear that we needed to prepare our nation for war. So we developed our own tank to use, don't ask how the ponies fit in there, reap the rewards of finishing the palace of the soviets, and started our own aggressive expansion by integrating the small village to our north. But that wasn't really that aggressive, so we had to kick it up a notch by declaring war on the Republic of Nova Griffonia. One thing I forget to use a lot in Hoi 4 is paratroopers. They're so useful, just dropping on the enemy supply hubs and cutting their railways so they have no supply and I can just roll through their front lines with ease. It's great being able to drop them wherever I want, I can easily take cities by surrounding them, and since they have so few units at this point, I can just snake their VPs and kill them. Stalingrad looks so much better on the map after this great victory, but of course, we can't get a victory like this without attracting some haters. While things were heating up on the west side with the war between Equestria and the Changelings, I moved to strengthen myself further by conquering the Kingdom of Yakistan. The paratroopers did great work speeding up the capitulation of Yakistan. After the initial encirclements, they weren't able to put up any sort of defense and I easily strolled through their country and liberated it from bourgeois rule. Our army had gotten great experience with these liberation wars, so when we attacked the penguins in the black and white storm, they couldn't even last more than two weeks before they accepted that Stalingrad knew what was best for them. With all the weaker nations integrated within the revolution, I figured it was time to take the next step and declare on one of the two major powers of the continent. Since Equestria was losing, I prepared to go against the Changelings, thinking that since Equestria was losing, they would be a lot weaker once I won against the Changelings. Once the war started, the paratroopers proved their worth again by encircling the troops who tried to entrench in the mountain pass. Once we neutralized the enemies in the pass, the ponies poured through the opening and rushed the northern protectorate capital. With this victory, Sinister Servov inspired his troops with a speech to know what they are fighting for so they would finish the mission. 
The tanks pulled up to the outskirts of the capital city and we launched our attack to surround the city and liberate it from its oppressors. With their capital loss, the Northern Protectorate could not even bother to resist us anymore and capitulated. Because of all the work I did, Equestria starts coming back and is running over the Changeling land, taking more land than I'm comfortable with, to be honest. I try to take as much as I can from them, even managing to take the Changeling capital, but in the peace deal I only have 14% war participation, so there's only so much I can do. But at least I'm able to create some decent borders in the north. Some optimistic ponies in this continent thought there could be peace at last, but obviously there can only be peace if I'm at the top. Starting off, we quickly secure the equestrian enclaves, but unfortunately, they do get a naval invasion in a major city before I'm able to set up my port defenses. They even flood that port with tanks, and I'm actually kind of impressed the AI was handling this kind of smartly. But fortunately, my heavy tanks were able to still push them back, and with the help of some paratroopers, we were able to take their other port. We easily cleaned up the cutoff troops after that, but it was obvious at this point that this war would require a lot more pony power for me to win. We were clearly outnumbered, so I had to plan a bold operation to even the numbers against me. These paratroopers would do this daring operation, securing the enemy supply lines, and with their supply crippled, the heavy tanks could easily push through the enemy lines and we could encircle them. When the operation was launched, the paratroopers landed with relative ease, and with the supply lines cut, the heavy tanks made their breakthroughs and they reached the mountains and got quite a catch. The AI couldn't even try to do a breakout attempt, and we could easily work on cleaning up the encirclement troops, and got some juicy kills here. I couldn't just stop here though, I had to keep making more pockets against the enemy troops to thin out their lines, and it was working, looking at the casualties between the two sides. But everything was not going to plan, the AI was pushing hard in the northern front, I had pretty much neglected it, but I tried to set up a more defensible position. I mean, I needed to focus on important stuff like getting more pockets. I don't even know why the AI put 40 divisions in one tile, but I had to move to encircle that. And with their lines so thin, we could just push and take the valuable city of Crystal City. But as I was pushing here, it was clear that the AI had been making gains since they took some of my good cities in the south. And later, I realized that I had completely forgotten to check the northern front in a while, and things had gone completely horribly. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how are you not checking on these fronts? Were you even paying attention? And I gotta confess, I was a bit distracted with other stuff at the time. So yeah, time was running out for me since I didn't have enough men to form a new coherent front line. But maybe, since they were also struggling to form a front line against me, in the south I could encircle more divisions and kill them faster than they could kill me. I mean, I was killing so many enemy units at this point, I was wondering how could they still keep up a war against me after losing this many men? Then I realized. The entire world was sending volunteers to fight against me. And this campaign has now turned into Saddam Hussein POV. So I was desperate. I needed something going for me. Maybe some weapons of mass destruction could turn the tide for me. We still had a large army in the west, so I could use that to make a major push in the Crystal Empire. And with our tanks, we were able to push forward and actually capitulate them. But it didn't do anything because I was barely able to maintain the front lines with the AI just snaking through holes I had in the southern front. I pushed south with my tanks there and we managed to make a lot of progress but now the hordes of ponies had arrived in the north and I had no faith in this defensive line. I still kept pushing south in the vain hope that they would not send enough troops to stop me from winning here. And then I'm informed that ponies are disappointed in my performance in the war and Honestly, I can't blame them. What I predicted happens, and the northern defense is broken. I try to send some tanks up there to rescue them, but all the units die before the tanks even arrive. 
I managed to train some units to make a backup backup line, but by the time that line is reformed, the southern front starts collapsing since the equestrians just sent a bunch of reinforcements and I lost half the army there because the front line was way too big and my tanks couldn't even save the units due to lack of supplies. At this point, it was clear we had to abandon everything we took in this war and return to our starting borders. But we couldn't even have that going for us with the AI naval invading a key city we needed to hold this defensive line. Although we still had tank divisions, they weren't doing us much good anymore. They had lost a lot of the actual tanks in their divisions and I couldn't replace the losses. Before I was able to even properly set up a new defensive line, the AI had already rushed my capital. But we still had enough power to do one more offensive and managed to liberate our capital. We did manage to consolidate our armies to form a decent-ish defensive line, but that would not last long with us unable to even contest the enemy air force. Slowly but surely, the enemies wore us down with pony wave attacks and we were pushed back. Our ponies were pushed out of Ravenskull and surrounded, but they managed to counterattack, retake the city to dig in and fight to the last pony. And when we were hit by the next mass attack by the equestrian forces, there he went, the last pony. And that's how this story ends with the AI slowly but surely pushing us back to our capital. It's sad in a way, our revolution was born in Stalingrad, and now it is where our revolution dies. There were regrets, of course. Maybe I could have built medium tanks instead of heavies so I had more armored divisions to work with. Maybe I could have built a better air force. And maybe I should have paid more attention to the game instead of watching Star Trek and losing a whole army. Still. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, though. This mod's actually pretty good, but in hindsight, probably didn't pick the best nation to showcase the mod, because I can tell this nation's content was made a long time ago. Anyways, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see my future content, and have a great rest of your day.